If I scroll down to, to Ana, and I see bigger Ana nerfs than Kiriko nerfs, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay, we've got some patch notes out live for this patch. Let's do a first look reaction. I have not seen them yet. So let's break it down. Okay, we got January 9th retail patch notes. All right. Tank, Mwalga, base health increased from 250 to 300, and base armor decreased from 250 to 200. That's a huge nerf. He was reducing so much damage. Like, you could feel the breakpoints on when you knocked his armor down. He was killable. So, he'll be way more killable from poke now than he was before. Because, like, the main thing is he'd use his cardiac overdrive and keep his armor up. And, like, that was why you just literally, you could not damage him. You could not damage him. So, that's a, that's a good change. Um, ammo reduced from 350 to 300. That's not a bad change either. Um, minimizing his uptime, which is what you need to do to ca have counterplay to him. Lifesteal decreased from 70 to 60%, and the cooldown increased from 10 to 12. Chat, I'm not going to lie. I think he's going to be terrible. I think he. I think these nerves are huge. Cage fight. No longer grants infinite ammo. Still reloads Maga's chain guns at the start of the ultimate. Okay, so it's a free reload. That's it. Berserker. Overhealth conversion rate decreased from 60 to 50. So massive Maga nerfs. Um, I think he's bad now. I, 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 I think he's I think he's bad now. I, I don't think he's he's definitely not meta. Like this armor change, this armor change combined with the lifesteal change means he's gonna be way worse. And you can if you force his uh cardiac overdrive now early, like that two seconds and then and the less health he has is gonna be a big, big nerf. So I think he's really weak to poke, but he'll still be decent in brawl and matchups like Reinhardt and Winston. Um, Arissa removed fa removed fall off damage penalty from the driver. Fortify now immune to taking force critical hit damage. Fortify already prevents critical hit damage from headshots. Okay, so basically they want Arissa to counter Mwaga. Th th this is this is strictly to make it so that Arissa is a better matchup against Mwaga. Um. I don't think it changes a lot other than the fact that he can't change. Now, like, you have to time his cardiac overdrive when she uses Fortify, which you were doing anyway. You're just going to get less out of it. So, because, again, you don't want to use cardiac overdrive when she's ignited, right? Or when she, when, she has, uh, when she has her spear, right, her jab spin, because she can just eat your damage. You're using it on the Fortify anyway. So, I still think Malga wins the matchup. Roadhog, take a breather. Total amount of healing reduced from 500 to 450. Cooldown between the... Oh, they nerfed Hog. Thank God. Oh, my God. They nerfed Hog. Thank God. Hog is just such an obnoxious character. And 5v5 forces him to be even more annoying to play against because he's just immortal, right? So these those are some pretty big nerfs to Hog. I'm glad to see those, especially with the Rissa buffs. Hog, Hog is going to be obsolete this patch. Okay. This is good. This is good. These tank changes are actually pretty good. I think Ramatra is the best tank in the game right now. I, I think Ram is so good right now. Ram and Sig. Ram and Sig. Um, Sojourn. Gradual energy now to... Why are they buffing Sojourn? Okay. Here's why this is silly. She's still meta at high level play. Oh my god. This is going to make my game so fucking miserable. Oh my goodness. Listen. Blizzard. If you wanted bad... So here, the problem with Sojourn is ever since they reworked her or changed her in Season 2 or 3, her win rate has been negative in every single rank, right? Maybe if you don't want Sojourn's win rate to be negative in every single rank and have her still be one of the best DPS in the game, if not the best DPS in the game at top-level play, maybe you should have nerfed the rail shot more instead of the actual spread so low SR players can actually get consistent damage off on her when they're missing her rail every shot anyway, right? The top 500 hit scans are going to abuse this so much. This is an abs that's that's an absolutely absurd change, and if you want to bring Sojourn more in line, you need to lower her ceiling a little bit and also lower the floor by reducing the spread and limiting the amount of rail shots that can come out. That's literally all you have to do. I said it in season two when they first tried to rework her and they made her the best hero in the game yet again, and I'll say it now. Like it just seems like they have no idea what to do with Sojourn to make her more approachable as a character because that's what this is intended to do. 
it's really clear that she has a super negative win rate and they don't like that. So what they want to do is they want to make her more approachable. But this doesn't do that, right? This just means that the top level players are going to abuse Railgun even more, which is the only way she's viable right now. And low level players are going to suck with her because they don't hit the rail shots anyway. And they can't do enough damage with the right click compared to a hero like Soldier or Reaper. So they're just going to pick Soldier or Reaper. So this doesn't change anything. This is a stupid change and it just shouldn't exist. Sombra. So this is interesting. Stealth. Grace period where stealth can be canceled immediately after entering it increased from 0.5 to 0.75 seconds. Cooldown now pauses at one second while capturing or contesting objectives from 1.5 seconds so you can go into stealth easier. Good. Cooldown on respawning decreased from 1.5 to one second. Very minor somber buffs. Very minor somber buffs. Okay. All right. I, if I scroll down to, to Ana and I see bigger Ana nerfs, than Kiriko nerfs. I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. If they've nerfed Ana harder than they've nerfed Kiriko or like Bap or any of these absurd support characters that are insanely strong, I'm gonna be frustrated. Moment of truth. Nerf Nate again. How much do they have to shave away at a fan, a fan favorite hero before people realize maybe forcing this format, which is what is causing these nerfs, is not the answer. This is the only skillful ability in the support role. The only one that is a projectile that leaves you at risk. The, the, this is the only ability in the entire support role that actually has fair risk to reward and you have to aim it and it has been nerfed more than any of the immortality abilities that are the most complained about in the game i just want people to think about that it's gonna keep happening and I, all i ask the people at home is where do you draw the line think in your mind about where you draw the line and don't shift with the goalposts, right because if we went back to overwatch one and said hey this is be this would be the out where, where would you draw the line for nerfing Ana and changing all these things? Nobody would have listed Ana as the problem, right? But they won't change the support passive. That's two seconds that makes them the best duelist in the game. No, they won't change Kiriko. No, they will keep nerfing Ana. So let's take a look at Alari next. All right, this won't change too much with where she stands, but I'm, it, it's the theme that I want people to pay attention to. Solar rifle primary fire charge gain is no longer paused by secondary fire. Nor channeling Captive Sun. That's that's a good change, making her more fluid. Ammo increase from 14 to 16. Captive Sun now fully refills secondary fire resource and resets overheal, overheated status. Okay. Remove damage fallout penalty on the Sunstruck Explosion. Okay. Those are pretty solid changes. Life Weaver. Thorn Valley projectile speed increased from 70 to 80 meters per second. Pedal platform no longer pierced by piercing projectiles. So Weaver got buffed too. Um... <sighs> W or an L? The tank section is a W, I think. It doesn't change a whole lot. Mostly the hog nerfs are good. Orissa buffs are bad. I don't I don't think she should have this at all. I don't like this. This is never boated well, ever. Right? And these are hefty. Like so hefty we might not see them for a while. I think Ramatra is gonna be really, really strong right now. Um, Sojourn buffs, I mean, absurd that th these are the way they change. They need, they need to, they need to reevaluate how they reworked her and tuned her in season two, um, instead of just buffing her, right? Like they need to accept the fact that they didn't change her well enough for majority of the players out there. And that that's probably what they need to do. They need to reduce that spread. It feels really shitty to play. And the play style of just holding rail all game is just, it's just boring. In my opinion, I think it's just boring. The somber changes are good. I don't like Nade getting nerfed more. I, I think it's the only fair support ability in the game. Um, Alari changes. I'm not a big fan of support buffs in general, but I think, again, they just reworked Alari in a poor way with the pylon, and they're having to compensate in other places now um, to make her competitive. I, I, I don't like seeing, and this is just their design model, they want the game to be more brain dead, right? They want the game to be super, super easy, for some scrub to buy a hero, pick it up, and get value on it, which is why you're seeing 
like, you see so many passive things get changed. Passive buff, right? Passive buff, right? Passive buffs, right? Passive buffs. These are all things that the player don't have to actually execute on to get value on, right? And they, they want these heroes to feel fluid. Um, whether that's good or bad, you kind of tell me, right? It, it, it depends on really each specific situation and what their goal is with the character. So yeah, I, I, I think that overall, like, th this patch is definitely better than the last one, only because the last one was so blatantly pay to win that it kind of broke the game. So yeah, okay.